And a wonderful good afternoon to you from the KXAN Live studios. I'm Billy Gates, and this is the Horns Report, where we talk about all things UT athletics. And we've got kind of a quick one today, but we wanted to highlight some of the athletes from UT that have already punched their tickets to the Paris 2024 Olympic Games coming up here in about a month or so. And with me, as usual, is KXAN Sports Director Roger Wallace. And Roger, let's just get right into it. Uh, Texas is going to have a lot more athletes in Paris by the time it's all said and done when all the trials happen near the end of June here. But first, I wanted to highlight uh, this tremendous decathlete, uh, Leo Neugebauer, who just won his second consecutive NCAA outdoor uh, decathlon in record fashion. Guy almost scored 9,000 points, came in about 89.61, which is uh, it, it broke his own decathlon record and is like the number six score in the entire history of the event so i mean just kind of how do you put that in perspective like for a college kid to be able to do something like that yeah he's been incredible and i, I think his discus throw was a world decathlon record yeah. uh, in oregon and he, he's going to obviously represent germany right so and that's kind of the cool thing about olympics is we we focus on longhorns but it doesn't necessarily means longhorns uh united states because uh, they come from all over the world. And so uh, certainly that would be uh, fun to watch him on NBC in Paris to see if he can compete for a gold medal and kind of see how that uh, college uh, numbers translate uh, onto the world stage. But uh, certainly, uh, as you mentioned, a lot of athletes right now, we think they'll be there, mm -hmm. but they've got to finish the job. There's no, you know, it's, it's as uh, democratic as it can get. You win. Uh, you're the fastest and, and you get in. There's no voting. There's no selecting. Right. And so uh, that's coming up here at the end of the week. It's going on in swimming. But, yeah, what a tremendous uh, Longhorn career he's had. And now uh, he'll take his uh, his decathlon numbers to Paris, see if he can stack up and get on a podium. Yeah, he finished fifth in the uh, 2023 World Athletics Championship in Budapest, Hungary uh, last year. And his number at the uh, NCAA Outdoor Championships up in Eugene uh, would have won that event uh, in 2023. So I mean, he's he's on a he's on a crash course to potentially medal uh, in in the event. There's another track athlete that I want to get highlighted here. Let me pull her photo up. Akelia Smith from Texas. She is gunning to compete for Jamaica uh, in the Olympics. Their trials not until uh, June 27th through the 30th. And, and as we all know, Roger, that Jamaican national track and field team is, is a very prestigious team to make. Yeah, you get through there, and you're probably going to have a good shot at, uh, at finishing pretty high. Of course, she had the double in the NCAAs, not only the long jump, but the triple jump, first time for a Texas athlete. But, but as you said, now she's got to go do it in Jamaica in their national championships, which also doubles as their Olympic trials. So, uh, again, it, it, I always say the trials are way more drama and emotion filled than the Olympics. You get to the Olympics, you get to go through opening ceremonies, and, and you're an Olympian. And then if you can win a medal, obviously that's, that's incredible. But there's so many that come up short because in track and field, top three, and swimming, top two. Top two aren't even guaranteed at mm -hmm. swimming. It's also predicated yeah. on number of total swimmers uh, for men and women. So uh, the trials by far are way more uh, stressful, way more suspenseful, I think, than the actual Olympic Games because of what it means to the athletes. Now, we don't look at it that way. We look at medals, and we look right. at uh, national anthems and gold medals. But for an athlete, uh, the trials is such a a emotional time for them because that's their ticket to get there. And then once you're an Olympian, uh, yeah, it's great to win a medal, but how many people can say they competed in the Olympics? Yeah. And there's a, a number of other uh, track athletes that are competing to, to be part of their national team uh, at the Olympics. Julian Alfred, if she can qualify, she'll represent St. Lucia. She's one of the fastest women in the world, uh, won the world championship uh, in the 60 meters uh, in the indoor version of track and field. And then uh, Rashida Adeleke uh, from Ireland, she could potentially represent them uh, in the 400. So it's a, a pretty pretty cool time for especially track athletes here in Texas after the uh, all the success that they've had. Pretty, yeah, right, pretty there, neat. right there you've mentioned four different countries, yeah. none being the United States. Right. <laughs> you know, one of the face of U.S. track and field, if you look at the NBC promos, is a shot putter Ryan Krauser. Right. 
two-time gold medalist. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know he's from your neck of the woods in Oregon. He is. He trains and he's a, a coach at Arkansas, but uh, University of Texas is where he graduated from. And certainly, you know, just because he has those two gold medals, you figure he'll sail through in Oregon. But Again, he's got to get the job done too. Yep, yep. Got to got got to put up or shut up, as they say. Like you got to you got to put the number up before they let you on the team. You're not just going to get there, you know, just uh, just just because you're nice. Like you you got to yeah. Put that the gold up. medal in 21 that doesn't get you in this time <laughs> nope, around. Nope, got to got to do it again. All right, and pivoting quickly to the uh, swimming trials, we'd mentioned those earlier. I still can't get over that they just rolled a pool into Lucas Oil Stadium. And they're having, then they're deciding the Olympic team with that. There's, like, it's a giant football stadium that's hosted Final Fours and obviously NFL and stuff like that. But I just wouldn't think you could just be able to put a pool in there and and have such a huge event, but that's what they're doing. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. There's plenty of videos online where you can see the time lapse of, of that pool going up in Lucas Oil. They had over 20,000 uh, a couple of nights ago, day two of the trials on Sunday night. Uh, it used to be in Omaha for many years. In mm -hmm. fact, at times it would overlap uh, with the College World Series right across the street from <laughs> uh, now Charles Schwab Field, and they they constructed a pool there. That's a you know a multi-purpose arena, but certainly mm -hmm. not a swimming venue. Uh, and now they've taken it a step further, going into a dome stadium. Yeah. Uh, but it, swimming's even tougher, Billy, than track and field. It's top two, and top two are not guaranteed, right. and people are are kind of confused by that. Well, you get 52, 26 men, 26 women. So, for instance, the relays, uh, you may need six for the free relay. Well, you might not finish in the top six, but if you qualified in another event, they might use you right. uh, in mm -hmm. the prelims or the semifinals for the relay. So even if you get second place, it's a pretty good chance you're going to sure. go, but uh, certainly not guaranteed. Carson Foster, the former right. Longhorn, who just missed out in 21, he goes in the 400 IM. That's mm -hmm. one, one of the biggest stories. Uh, and then tonight, as we uh, tape this on uh, Monday night, you've sure. got three with Texas ties in the 200-meter free mm -hmm. final. And, and again, just because we see the Longhorn on the cap, doesn't mean they're Longhorns. It's Longhorn Aquatics. And now with Bob Bowman, the new coach, you've got a lot of athletes coming in from other swim clubs that trained under Bowman that now wear the Longhorn Aquatics cap. Mm -hmm. Chase Kalish, who Foster beat, for instance, in the 400 IM, uh, he's got the Longhorn on his cap because he's a Bowman swimmer. So now he's he's training UT. So uh, it kind of keeps us on our toes, the difference <laughs> between Longhorns, former Longhorns, yes. future Longhorns, and Longhorn Aquatics that have no other affiliation. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. Make, make sure head spin. Uh, Aaron Shackle, who is going to be a Longhorn, transferring from Cal after spending a semester there and then taking a redshirt year to prepare for the Olympics. Uh, he's going to be a Longhorn next year, presumably. At least that's what he says. Uh, we'll see after the Olympics. Who knows? Um, he qualified in the 400 free, uh, so I guess technically he is a Longhorn Sort of, kind of like that same sort of deal with the Longhorn Aquatics. He swims thing. down the street at UT, sure. we can right. say that. Yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's just, just down the street here at MLK Junior. And he had to get in, he had a, a swim off yes. for that eighth spot for tonight's 200 final. So he swam the semifinal. It was a dead heat uh, time-wise for that number eight slot. So mm -hmm. he had to swim again uh, and qualify to get into tonight's final. And again, they have an 800 free relay. So if you're... Uh, in the top four, you're almost right. certainly going to be part of the relay, mm -hmm. and likely they'll want six swimmers to be a part of it. But again, it could be guys that swim other events that also are, are really good in freestyle, good enough to get them through a, a preliminary heat. Yeah, so a lot going on uh, with the Olympics ramping up here to a little bit over a month or so. Um, keep it on KXAN.com and on KXAN. We have, we're going to have a ton of coverage about the Olympics. We're sending our own reporter over to Paris. Jayla Washington will be there. Representing KXAN with a group of other Next Star journalists, uh, going to provide all kinds of live shots and all sorts of information uh, right there uh, on the scene in Paris. Should be pretty neat to see all of that unfold. And of course, KXAN.com. I know I'm going to be busy keeping the uh, keeping the website update, and I know Roger and the rest of the crew will be busy being on air with all the Olympic stuff. So so keep it here, NBC, the home of the Olympics. As as always, you get to listen to Dan Hicks. Um, and uh, Rowdy Gaines scream at all the swimmers again. That's why. If for, if for no other reason, <laughs> Rowdy Gaines is uh, worth the watch. And the cool things about swimming, yeah. Billy, it's just boom, boom, boom. Like tonight, we're going to have, a, I think, five finals and some semifinals. But there's no 
there's no not much downtime. You get to race, 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 and yeah. also the diving uh, trials begin tonight as well on NBC. Yes, and there's a, I believe there's ten Longhorns uh, divers in in the uh, with some sort of connection anyway That's right. <laughs> um, in, in in the field there. So plenty more chances for uh, UT affiliated athletes to to represent uh, the red, white, and blue over in France, which is the Stars and Stripes, because France's flag is also red, white, and blue. They are. <laughs> so um, I, uh, until then, we're going to keep you updated. But until then, this will be it for this edition of the Horns Report. Uh, for Roger Wallace, I'm Billy Gates. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll talk to you again very soon.